Macaws flock here from tens of miles around. They gather in the trees and wait for a brave individual to fly down to the lift and reassure them that the area is free from predators. Once a few make it down safely, the rest decide to follow. Not only does eating the clay provide salt, but it also helps to neutralize the toxic chemicals found in many of the unripe fruits in the macaw diet. For the macaws, these visits to the local clay lake are more than just feeding opportunities. They're places where mates can be found and disputes can be settled. It's nesting season, and high in the branches of a Chihuahuaco tree, two macaw parents have enlarged a natural hollow. Inside is a hungry chick, who now after several months of confinement, is beginning to survey the world outside. For now, his mother and father must deliver his daily dose of clay, but in a few weeks' time, he'll be ready to fly the nest and follow his parents. For other animals, it simply isn't possible to carve salt from the earth, but they require it just the same. Like the macaws, these butterflies spend much of their time high in the canopy, but every now and again, they too must ascend. The butterflies congregate on damp earth at the banks of a lake, where the waters have receded and deposited salts and other nutrients behind them. For butterflies, life in the rainforest can be hazardous at best. Golden orb spiders are goliaths, but so too are blue morpho butterflies. The spider approaches with caution, wary of the butterfly's powerful wings. But butterflies this large don't stay stuck for long. While spiders may pose a nuisance to some, This hummingbird is making her first nest, strung together with spider silk and hung from the tip of a leaf. On each trip, she can carry a single blade of grass or a tangled strand of spider silk. It takes her weeks to finish.
you must remain constantly vigilant, as other hummingbirds may try to take an empty nest for themselves. Once she is ready, she lays a single white egg, smaller than a fingernail. She may seem exposed, but her nest is positioned so far from the palm stem that only the lightest predator could attack it without falling to the ground. Despite the distance, the whole commute only takes each ant about an hour. Efficiency is key, and once the jaws of workers become blunted, they'll carry the leaves cut by their little sisters instead. At the surface, their home doesn't look like much, but below lies an underground labyrinth of tunnels with as many members as the city of London. Here in the bowels of the earth, they store their precious leaves and meticulously tend to fungus gardens that sprout from the decomposing vegetation. The tiny, white, rounded, brooding bodies of the fungus are used to feed the entire colony. skyward realm exists the greatest diversity of life in the rainforest, and so on Earth itself. Red howler monkeys travel for miles across the treetops and stake a group's claim to a small patch of trees where they will socialize and feed on young leaves. Troops of brown capuchin monkeys will range far throughout the forest and will eat almost anything they can get their hands on, whether it's flowers, insects, fruit, or even small mammals. are often tailed by hundreds of smaller squirrel monkeys who will pick up whatever they leave behind. This unlikely alliance was forged to reduce the risk that a single individual would be picked off by an eagle. The largest of the monkeys here are the spider monkeys. And they are constantly on the move. They follow well-trodden routes that track the shortest distance between fruiting trees. During times of plenty, 
as many as a hundred individuals can be found traveling together for a short time. When small groups meet, new friends are made, and new groups are formed. When food is plentiful, spider monkeys will select the best bits from each fruit and drop the rest. But it rarely goes to waste, as peccaries that roam the forest floor will consume much of what's been dropped. off their diet, collared peccaries seek out special places from which to feed. The thick mud in this hole contains unusually high concentrations of salt, a rare treat so far from the sea. Small mineral licks like this one are dotted throughout the forest, and for many animals, they're like miniature oases in a nutrient-poor desert. the day, a variety of visitors come and go. Some, like this red brocket deer, are particularly wary as they know that jaguars hunt here too. Spix's guans spend most of the day close by the lick, and occasionally venture down to pluck insects from the clay walls. But at the slightest sign of danger, they'll sound the alarm and let others know that it's time for them to leave. Once she's mustered up the strength to focus on the task at hand, she finds a termite nest and decides that it isn't quite the kind she's looking for. Keeping up appearances is important too, and a good grooming regime is sure to please a mate. We still don't know how silky anteaters managed to find each other in such a vast wilderness. In fact, nobody knows much about them at all. But not all animals avoid predation by hiding away in those hard to reach places. Many hide in plain sight. At this scale, nothing is quite what it seems. Down to the finest detail, these insects are masters of camouflage. Leaf mimicking katydids copy the vein structures of the leaves that they live on. Some stick insects even mimic the particular species of moss and lichen that tend to grow from their favorite trees. Some, like this arachnid, are predators, and others will become prey. But all are striving to remain undetected.
While many animals avoid predators and catch prey by copying the designs of others, these moths have an entirely different strategy. They hide amongst the hairs of sloths and can't be found anywhere else. The sloth's dense hair supports a variety of algae that help it to blend in with the surrounding jungle. And they move so slowly and infrequently that they're rarely spotted by predators. Three-toed sloths spend between 15 and 20 hours of each day fast asleep. Their leafy diet is simply too poor in calories to keep them going for much longer. perfect place for moths to make a permanent home. But hiding away and living the...